वेलकम टू द लोक नीति पॉडकास्ट विद मी शिवांश मिश्रा टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट फॉर्मर इंडियन एम्बेसडर के पी फैबियन एम्बेसडर के पी फैबियन सर्व इन द इंडियन फॉरेन सर्विसेज बिटवीन 1964 एंड 2000। इन हिज डिप्लोमेटिक टर्म ही स्पेंड थ्री इयर्स इन ईरान एंड विटनेस द ईरानियन रेवोल्यूशन फर्स्ट हैंड एज अ जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी गर्ल्फ इन द आई के गुजरात गवर्नमेंट फैबियन कोऑर्डिनेटेड द इवेक्युएशन ऑफ ओवर वन इंडियन नेशनल्स फ्रॉम इराक and kuwait so a uh, year ago i got the signed copy of this book and today we are happy to have him on our podcast lokniti to discuss the west asia war israel hamas conflict so hello sir how are you hey how are you fine sir fine so today we are here to shoot our second episode of lokniti podcast on the issue of west asia war and the ongoing conflict of israel and hamas so i will i want to know uh, the very first thing the background of the israel and hamas war and uh, how do you see because world is different see another war like after the ukraine uh, can the world afford be another war like israel and hamas and uh, and what will be the future scenario of the middle east because you have been there for a long time you you were ambassador of qatar so What's your take on this? Can you give some background about the war? Thank you. Uh, it's like this. Uh, on the 7th of October, Hamas militants, hundreds of them, they were able to cross over into Israel and uh, commit atrocities. You know, kill Israel. innocent civilians who were dancing singing or even take them away as hostages so what hamas did is absolutely condemnable there is no question about it but if we stop by condemning hamas and if you do not look at the big picture and ask the question why did it happen then we are not understanding anything you see you can say that uh, they are terrorists agreed but the question remains why did they become terrorists how did they become terrorists and so to understand that we have to go back into history we have to go back into the genesis of israel as we know there was palestine yes. the, and the british had a mandate of palestine after the first world war but there again if you remember lawrence of arabia he went round and told the arabs look you are now subjects if you want to be independent after this war revolt we the west would establish independent arab kingdoms or arab states whatever it is well the arabs believed they you know revolted but in between 1916 sykes pico is if sykes was an english man and pico was a french guy secretly they entered into an agreement to divide west asia between united kingdom and france you see right and and that was secret and uh, it was sent to Ra- russia tsarist russia because russia also had some interest in it both for us you know and all that well then what happened the october revolution 1917 lenin opened up the archives of the foreign office well everybody came to know of the sykes pico secret agreement and then president wilson of the united states came out with his famous 14 points including open covenants openly arrived it you know he had at the back of his mind 
the size we go. Okay, so that is one part. Second part is 1917. The Foreign Secretary, Bolfer, he wrote a letter to Lord Rothschild, a great leader of the Jews. Incidentally, he said that, you know, the His Majesty's government will endeavor to give a homeland to the Jews. Okay, incidentally, the letter was drafted by the one to whom it was addressed. United Nations General Assembly Resolution 181, which wanted to establish the State of Palestine, State of Israel, and an independent Jerusalem. Okay? And uh, before that, you know, the, the King David Hotel, where uh, the Mandate Administration had its headquarters, a terrorist group, Jewish terrorist group, they bombed it and 95 people were killed, including Britons, Jews, Arabs and others. 1947. 1945. Oh. And one of the leaders became Prime Minister later. Okay. Then in uh, 46, Bernadotte, uh, uh, Count Bernadotte, Falk Bernadotte, Swedish diplomat, who had saved, mark my words, over 20,000 Jews from German concentration camps. 20,000 Jews. Okay? Great diplomat. Okay? He was appointed as the special representative of, by the Security Council to implement the resolution establishing Palestine, Israel, and Jerusalem. Well, the Jews wanted Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Another terrorist group, you know, assassinated him. And one of the leaders became Prime Minister Shamir. It's Sak Shamir. He became the Prime Minister of, of uh, Israel. Of Israel. You see? Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if you look at historically, Israel was begotten by two factors. One, acts of terrorism which they committed. I'll tell you more about it. We've seen it's the state terrorism, what we can term in the... I, at one point, it's non-state terrorism because there is no Israel. There was no Israel. <laughs> but later on... Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, whatever they did before, uh, you know, it was nonsense. The presence of Israel. Okay. And, of course, of course, the United Nations resolutions. These two. Okay. Then, what happened? The resolution said that uh, Israel, Palestine and Jerusalem should be established the day the mandate, British mandate, ends. But, Israel declared itself independent one day before, violating the United Nations General Assembly resolution. Why so? Why so was that? Well, I suppose uh, they wanted to show that, you know, we, we, are, we, we are on our own. You know what I mean? We are, we are self begotten. You know what I mean? And then they sort of invaded the territory which was meant to be state of Palestine. So that Palestine is like the territory was decided in the UN Charter? Yes, yes, UN Charter. There is a map actually. The, you, if you can look up, you know, there is a map. Is a map. Uh, yeah, even General Assembly. General Assembly. General Assembly. Yeah. Okay. So, which had three parts to it. It's a, so then what they did was they attacked the territory which was meant for Palestine and as many as 7 lakhs of Palestinians fled. Oh, they fled, I mean, not, not Egypt, but I mean, sir, from one point, mm -hmm. they fled to another part. No. Many of them fled to Gaza, but it is now Gaza. 
Okay. So also uh, Israel got a bigger territory than envisaged in the United Nations resolution. Okay. And that is why the Palestinians call it NAPKA. N-A-B-K-A, which means uh, huge, big destruction. I mean, terrible disaster. You know what I mean. Okay. That was 948-49. That sort of thing. Then, 67 war. Arabs started it, but they were humiliatingly defeated. And then Israel captured the territories, Gaza, West Bank, and Golan Heights. Golan Heights in Syria. West Bank was with Jordan. Gaza was with Egypt. Incidentally, why was there no state of Palestine? See, the Palestinians wanted to form a government, at least a government in exile. You know what I mean? But Egypt was eyeing Gaza. Jordan was eyeing the West Bank. In other words, Arab powers themselves did not want an independent Palestine because they had their territorial ambitions. <coughs> okay, so 67. Ira I'm sorry, Israel was able to capture. Security Council Resolution 242, which said Israel should withdraw from occupied territories. Okay? It was very clear. Okay, no conditions. Okay? But, you see, occupied territories, it didn't say de-occupied territories. So, the question is whether 100%, 90%, or 60%. You know what I mean? Now, the funny thing is, in the French version, it said, de territoires occupés. That means, de-occupied territories. Whereas in the English version, it was from occupied territories. Now, both UK and USA and the uh, Security Council argue, no, no, it is English text that we have been negotiating. So the English text prevails. They're not exactly correct, because in the UN, all texts are equally valid. And if there is a doubt, then of course, you can you know, discuss it. But anyway, which meant that Israel did not have to vacate from all the territories. But then, Israel did not want to vacate from any territory at all, not even an inch. So there was a war in 1973 against the Arabs. Right. Now, that war was uh, ended with uh, the Soviet Union and the United States working together. Okay. okay. And what, what was the... Yeah, and, and they had a, uh, the, the, again, Security Council Resolution 338. Okay. And uh, it reiterated Resolution 242. You know, Israel should be... Withdraw. But Israel was not going to withdraw. 1973. Then the Oslo Accords, 1993-95, which envisaged a two-state solution, meaning the existing Israeli state and a new state, mm -hmm. Palestine, yes. according to the 1967 boundaries. Before the war, right? okay. I mean, that is the occupied territories. That's the meaning of that. That Israel had signed, and the prime minister who signed it, he was assassinated. Again. Okay, and those who assassinated were heroes for Netanyahu. The the, the present government. And yeah, the most like yeah. Yeah. liquid party. Yeah. Liquid. Heroes for. Okay. Okay. So. Now, how come, let me ask you the question, that Israel has been able to brazenly violate United Nations resolutions and its own signed agreements 
two reasons. One is it Israel does not want a Palestinian state. Point. But second reason, even more important, the United States protects Israel. And what is more intriguing is that Israel gets military aid from the United States, I think till now about $150 billion worth it has received. And also diplomatic protection. E equally important. Equally, equally important. important. Okay. okay. But you might think that, you know, in this case the donor has some say in the policy of the foreign the policy of the, the of, of the receiver, right. recipient. Right. No. It's the other way around. How so how so Jews become so strong in the American I'll tell you. The, the other way around. It is the recipient who has much say in the foreign policy of the donor as regards the region. That is because of the Israeli lobby. In fact, there is a book, uh, Israeli Lobby and U.S. Foreign Policy by John uh, Merzheimer and uh, uh, Stephen Walt, another professor. Some books are left in the Israeli Lobby and U.S. Foreign Policy. It was published in 2007. Still worth reading. Because if you are a candidate, either for the Senate or for the House, or if you want to be the President, you need the support of the Jewish lobby. So that is how it happened. So now coming to this, as I said, it's not enough to condemn the Hamas. As I said, it's, one should condemn, but one should not stop there. One should ask, why? The other, other picture. Yeah, the big picture. picture. And the big picture is that Gaza is the biggest open air prison under the moon. Okay? And about Hamas, Biden says they are terrorists and uh, they don't have any popular support. Well, I'm sorry because when Biden got elected as president, I had written an article praising him. When Biden got elected, I had written an article praising him, saying that here is a man who has the longest experience in foreign policy entering the White House. Yes. So we can expect good things. Now, what he is talk, talking about Hamas does not make any sense because he should have known 2005 September, Ariel Sharon, Prime Minister, who is also a general, decided to withdraw from Gaza. 2006, an election was held in Gaza and in the West Bank. An election which European Union observers said was free and open, fair. And Hamas got the majority. They defeated Fatah, the other party. 2006. Okay? Yes, sir. Obviously, historically, it's been recent. Then what happened? You see, Abbas belongs to Fatah. You know that. So for a short while, there was a, a Hamas prime minister. But then, Hamas, I mean, Abbas and Israel maneuvered. And that ministry fell. You see? They had the majority, but that ministry was dismissed. Then what happened? Hamas took over, retained control over Gaza. I mean, election wise, they should have been ruling both Gaza and the West Bank, but they could retain only Gaza. So for, you know, Israel to say that, you know, they captured power in Gaza, wrong. And then what happened? Once Hamas, Hamas took over power, Israel started, what shall I say, suffocating them, asphyxiating them financially. Because nothing can go there without Israel's permission. You know what? European Union shop funding. They are terrorists. They were declared a terrorist. Why so? What? Because Israel did not want a democratically elected Palestinian you know, 
even if that small part. And incidentally, Israel had funded Hamas. I was going to that point, yeah. You see? That is when uh, Yasser Arafat, incidentally I had met him. Okay. In, uh, yeah. in Baghdad. Yeah. I had gone there with uh, Foreign Minister Gujral after, yeah. uh, yeah. after Saddam Hussein won the other the pi Kuwait. picnic in Kuwait. Yeah. Polish picnic, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. So uh, Yasser Arafat was at that time staying in Iraq, Baghdad, and he had invited us for dinner. And okay. He gave a shawl and all that, but I've lost it. But a very charming man. Very charming. You see? So, Yasser yeah, Arafat's star was, you know, rising up. Rising star. And then uh, the intelligence wanted, as a counterweight, they started funding Hamas. Hamas. It's almost like a bit like what Indira Gandhi did to Bindran Wale. You know the story. No, still, and we all knew that. Yeah, unfortunate and tragic. And, yeah. You know what I mean. So, see, this, is, this is where we are. Now, Netanyahu has really imitated Hamas in the sense that Hamas did terrible things. But Netanyahu is continuing to do terrible things for how many days now? There was, in fact, recent statement of Joe Biden in which he said that uh, don't be exaggerated what we did after 9-11. It would be, it was foolish, how do we, although we get the results, but he advised Netanyahu to be cautious about the things. What yeah, but then let me tell you, first you must have talked to Netanyahu privately. Right. And since Netanyahu did not give Maybe. the answer, so... Biden had to say it publicly. Public, you know, public In fact, uh, whether it is Netanyahu or uh, Rishi Sunak or German Chancellor, they are not, you know, demanding it from Israel. They very timidly are asking a request Netanyahu. And uh, Netanyahu said nothing to him. In fact, Biden said, why don't you uh, send some uh, humanitarian material from Israel? Yeah. He said nothing to him. Then very reluctantly Netanyahu said, okay, 20 trucks. And that too without fuel. Okay, that's peanuts. Because 100 trucks used to come a day. And since they have been blockaded for so long now, they need us more. Mm -hmm. In other words, Netanyahu can get away with blue murder. You see? With the West... You know, timidly asking him, don't do that. And one of the reasons why Biden went was, one of the reasons, to make sure that uh, with his Netanyahu's decision-making style, Biden was worried that he will provoke his bulla. And there will be bigger war. In Lebanon. Yeah. His bulla in Lebanon, hmm. supported by yeah. Iran. And the geography says that Iran can send material aid to Hezbollah. Yes. Iran cannot send any material aid to Hamas. Yes. You know what I mean. And the uh, recent statement by the foreign minister of Iran, which in which he said that if Israel won't stop its attack on Gaza, there will be an earthquake. So, no, they said, well, what they mean is that correct. What they really mean is that if there is a ground invasion and occupation, then you know, they will not be standing. They will enter in the sea. They, well, they will not, yeah, they enter. They will not stand still. That's what Iran has been saying. And already in Iraq, there are pro-Iranian armed militias. Okay. And they have already attacked uh, American air bases in Iraq. And you know that uh, from Yemen, some missiles and uh, drones were moving towards Israel. And the American Navy had to sort of, you know, shoot them down. So my view is that, uh, and Israel has already vacated uh, the town to, next to the Lebanese border. You know, but my view is that unfortunately, touch wood, the situation is perilous, dangerous. There can be. Because uh, uh, if Israeli military enters 
Gaza, first of all, it can be a quagmire. Okay. Because the Saturday, I mean the underground I mean tunnels are there. Now of course Hamas says uh, 500 kilometers, but we don't. But whatever it is, they are there. And Israeli army will go in with the order to shoot anything moving, which means civilians will be killed. You know what I mean? So what uh, I was happy that uh, uh, they have re released two hostages. Yeah. In fact, in which American in, the, in the citizen, I had written mm -hmm. that they should release. In fact, what Hamas should release, I had written two days ago. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to see is, Hamas should now announce, we are going to release two hostages every week. Okay. And, and two non-Israeli hostages. And occasionally one Israeli. Okay. Then they should say, next week, we are also going to... Uh, release an Israeli military. But we want Israel to give us a name, to choose. Then there will be so much pressure on Netanyahu from the families. Choose my son, my brother. In other words, they have to use, this is the only trump card they have. You know what I mean? And they should use it. Uh, there is also another thing that their aim to like um, if we get in the things that why did they attack on the israel on the 7th of october uh, the deal that was procured by us uh, it hampered the all deal after the attack and yeah, america is pushing saudi arabia saudi arabia yes. yeah. but the point is you know biden said and said that that is why they have done it no that's not a correct reading biden should know his history another thing Question is, did Netanyahu want this to happen so that he was in trouble? There were demonstrations. After he moved the legislation to cut down the independence of the judiciary. Now the question is, did he want it? Because Egypt had warned Israel 10 days ago that these people are planning something big. As I said, Egyptian intelligence has good access. Okay? And that Egypt had warned was corroborated by, you can check it out, chair of the House of Representative Foreign Affairs Committee. You know what I mean? In other words, Netanyahu had prior warning. Point number one. Point number two, under Netanyahu, and suddenly he lost the last election, he didn't get the majority, so he had to go to the uh, far right. You know? Now, because of that, the far right have been ruling the roost, you know, running wild. They had violated the sanctity of Al-Aqsa, uh, the mosque, yeah. holy of holies for Muslims. Not only that, you know, a Christian procession was going. This, so it seems he wanted it. And another thing is that... That's a big thing you are saying. Yeah. Another thing is the defense minister, Gallant. You know, he... Did you hear? He said, these are human animals. Yes, now, that reminded me of Hitler saying, the Jews are untermenschen, subhuman. And if I may say so, a famous French philosopher, De La Rochefoucauld said, imitation is the sincerest flattery. In other words, by saying what he did, what he said, the defense minister of Israel was flattering Hitler. <laughs> So, but sir, I want to know that how, as you said, that once they were forming the government, the Thomas Court in Palestine, they were forming, forming the government. And so, how did they turn out to be from the political force to the militant force? Like, if you are forming the government, you are in the power, you have the leaders, 
and the next thing in the 10 years like 2006 or not the, uh, by the 12 years 15 years now you are portrayed as a militant group around the world and the act you did was like uh, stamping what the world was saying to no, them. In, in that part of the world i mean uh, you will have many wings one is a political wing the other is a armed wing Really? Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 you know, even uh, PLO had it, you know, that's standard practice. Because in that situation, you need it. Only thing is that when the political wing uh, succeeded in the election, got power and lost power, then what happens? Then the armed wing gets stronger. You know what I mean? So, that happens. So, but so what was their motive behind? Because there should be any objective to attack Israel. And do you see that, uh, as you said, that maybe Netanyahu is behind these all attack because elections are coming close. So what they get out of it, Hamas? Like this, we have to understand that in a, they are in a state of desperation. You know what I mean? They are in a state of despair. When people are in despair, they do things which they should not be doing. You know what I mean? But let us not forget one thing. Now everybody is talking about Palestine. Most people have forgotten. Biden administration had forgotten all about it. And again, Biden saying, "Oh, uh, uh, saying, oh, everything is going to work out uh, with um, uh, Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia coming together. Then uh, things are improving for uh, Palestine. Absolute rubbish. Palestine cause." was getting forgotten. I have attended many Palestine Day celebrations when I was in office. You know what I mean? No, what is what we understand is that the Arab governments had removed it from their table. You know what I mean? But now the Arab street has become active and uh, and uh, you know and you know that the uh, summit with uh, Biden was cancelled. A rare snub for an American president. You know. So let us not, you know, sort of, you know. I agree the price is very heavy and uh, all, I agree, but my point is that uh, politically you cannot say that they are not going to gain. So, what's the future for Palestine? Like from now onwards, how, what? Israel is going to uh, attack the way they are attacking right now. No, the best scenario is a Palestinian state. But I don't expect Israel to agree to it. I don't expect America or the West uh, in a position to push Israel. You know what I mean? I don't think so. But uh, something has to be there. They will get something. They will get something. And sir, from the Indian context, how do you say India stands on this? Because uh, the immediate the immediate uh, response of the PM Modi was towards sympathy towards Israel, and later on we saw, saw that MES statement, which was saying that no, we also believe the sovereignty and the rights of Palestinians. They are also in the they are also being harmed, they are also being suppressed. So, what, what, how do you see this? See, it's like this. When Prime Minister Modi came out with a tweet, on day one I had told some of the channels, you know, that uh, it was an unbalanced reaction. See, it's like this. We have to maintain our relation, uh, good relations with Israel. For various reasons, I don't have to go into it. At the same time, we are a voice, important voice of the global south, much celebrated during G20. Yes. So, this is one goal, this is another girl. goal. Now, it is the business of diplomacy to find words you know, which marry the two goals, which our diplomats did exceedingly well at the G20. Yeah. So it was possible for India to come out with a set of words 
giving support to Israel, but again combining it with our uh, long-term position of uh, supporting a Palestinian state. But why did this happen? Because the PMO gave the tweet. Now, when I was in office, well, the Joint Secretary would, uh, I mean, actually this happened when uh, Iraq, I'm sorry, when Saddam Hussein walked into Kuwait, 2nd of August, well, I prepared a statement, draft, went to my, it went to my additional secretary, then it went to the foreign secretary, then it went to Gujral, and the equation between Gujral and the prime minister being what it is, Gujral located it. He didn't send it to the PMO, and we issued it. Now, since the PMO takes so much interest, okay, that's good. MEA would have sent a draft, should have sent a draft, and PMO could have said, okay, suggest two, three changes. Then MEA would have said, okay, changes one and two, okay, but the third one, you know, we have to think. And we would have agreed a conversation. Here there was, perhaps, you can check on it, there was no conversation. So, MEA had to wait, negotiate, and come out with a statement, which was, in plain English, a correction of the Prime Minister's tweet. But then let me also tell you, any foreign ambassador would have told his or her foreign office, well, here is the Prime Minister's tweet and here is the MEA statement. Well, the Prime Minister's tweet represents the real position of India. India. These are damage control. Mm. So you are saying that the real position of India is the response for what? PM Modi gave. I'm not saying, I said that is how foreign ambassadors would have told their foreign officers. <laughs> okay, and sir, uh, the next thing I would like to know, what about the deals like I2U2? Uh, what's the future of the, those deals? Uh, because if Israel will be engaged in war, like for if, if it's a long-term war, you don't know for how long it will go. And if it goes on like the Ukraine war for a year or six months, so the deal in they are into and on the geopolitical stance, so it will affect India. No, it's like this. Uh, you know, UAE is on the Security Council. It is, has taken a strong position against Israel. Okay. Now, U2, I2 and all that, they, they will not be, what shall I say, they will still be there, but everything gets slowed down. You know, it's not on the table now. It's that file is somewhere there in the Almira. Locked it. So it's a loss for India. It's a loss for it India. Loss. Yeah, but nothing to do with India's policy. If something happened, whatever India's statements would have been, you know, it would have happened. So the Prime Minister's statement doesn't, uh, uh, you can't say that because of that, this U2, I2 will slow. No, that would have been put into the Almira, locked up in any case. Okay. What's the future prospect for India? Like, if the war continues to go on for the year, it can hamper the India stance in Egypt on this stuff. I don't expect the war to continue for a year and a half. Because we have to understand that, uh, as I told you, Gaza is the biggest open air prison. Okay. Electricity is, they are running short. In fact, many of them don't have it. Water is in short supply. Food is in short supply, so it has to come to a stop at some point of time. So it's not you are not looking at one year. Only thing is that if Netanyahu is, uh, what shall I say, impulsive, and uh, if he wants another front with his bulla, then again you are not looking at one year or anything like that. But it also depends on the terms of the ending, you know. The ceasefire and then the talks, you know. Uh, will they come to a table, Hamas and uh, Palestine, Hamas or Israel? No, Israel and Palestine will not be sitting like this. Uh, what happens normally is that, you know, they sit in different rooms. You know what I mean. And who will be the mediator between that? Uh, Egypt is a candidate and Qatar also. Okay. Ka Qatar, because uh, Qatar has been financing... Uh, 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 Hamas. You okay. see, when uh, so it's Iran and Qatar both. 
Iran, I'm sorry, Egypt and uh, Qatar. Egypt and Qatar, not, not Iran. Uh, well, Iran, of course, has some influence over Hamas, but, you know, again, and again, Qatar and Iran, they work together. You know what I mean? Only thing is that, naturally, America also has to be there. Only thing is, America will agree to a ceasefire or ask for a ceasefire after taking permission from Netanyahu. You know what I mean? And when he will stop, like, what's his ambition? No, I, all these demonstrations going on. And do, do, no, look, uh, Security Council, did you notice? The Brazilian resolution was vetoed by United States. Okay? And uh, 15 members, 12 agreed with the Brazilian resolution for a humanitarian post. Okay? Two sort of abstained. Okay? But America was alone in vetoing it. In other words, UK, France were not with America. You know what I mean? So, let me put it this way. The support which Israel, um, Israel got at the beginning because of the terrible things which uh, Hamas did. It, it peaked. Now it is coming down. And the reason uh, attacks at the hospital? Yes. All these reasons, it is down. And the, the demonstrations are taking place. So, so it, yeah, yeah. Netanyahu will be compelled. And as I said earlier, Hamas has the trump cards. If they do what we said, okay, we are going to release. Next release is, uh, uh, well, give a date. Today is uh, 21st. Okay. Next release is on 24th. And there will be one Israeli military. We invite Latin, uh, Israelis to choose. If they do these imaginative things. See, Netanyahu cannot keep his army in a state of readiness for seven weeks. No, you can't keep an army in readiness for seven weeks because the army wants to... In fact, the defense minister, army has been saying we are ready to go. Defense minister inspected them and... No, you can't. It's psychology. Because if I am the general and if you are the president, you ask me to be ready, I am ready. You can postpone it once, twice, thrice. The fourth time you ask me to postpone it, hey, what's wrong with my boss? So, you know, I mean, the morale comes down. So you can't. So what I'm trying to say is that the world cannot compel Netanyahu to ask for a ceasefire, agree to a ceasefire. But the world can make him delay the ground invasion. And if it is delayed from time to time, once, twice, thrice, four times, then the morale will go down and he will be compelled. You know what I mean. That is the, that is a technique. So, like we have discussed all the aspects, but I want to know the role of China, where China will be there because China has come statement. You saw that they said there should be a Palestinian state. That is only sustainable solution, which is right. And if you notice the Russia's statement, same statement, but something added. They said, a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. You see? Now, I don't expect Russia or China to get militarily involved, except that some Russian had made a statement that we have got hypersonic missiles which can reach the American task force, but I don't expect, you know what I mean. But uh, don't forget, uh, without uh, getting militarily engaged, still China and Russia, they are permanent members of Security Council, they carry a lot of weight. Uh, can China work in the back with uh, Iran, uh, Hezbollah funding? Anyway, my point is that uh, as far as Hezbollah funding is concerned, uh, uh, Iran has enough. They got six billion from the United States. You know that. Just a couple of weeks ago, 
I mean, the money was in South Korea. And you know that it came through Qatar. And Biden is already under criticism. Yeah. Yeah, but point is, uh, any case, let's understand the big picture. Partly because of Biden's policies, but in good measure, Russia and China have almost formed an axis. You know what I mean? Now, again, because of Biden's policies, that is not resuming the nuclear deal with Iran, which as a candidate, he had said that he would. Remember? Then you know what happened? Uh, Anthony Blinken, his uh, appointment, uh, ratification of his appointment was coming up in the Senate. And the Republicans, they pushed him hard. And he had to come out with a statement saying that we cannot resume that nuclear deal unless Iran agrees to A, B, C, D, E. In fact, he repeated Trump's language. Right. You know, control on Iran's missile development, control on Iran's destabilizing yeah. the policies program. in the region and all that. He repeated verbatim. Then only he got the appointment. You see? So, look at the map. Russia, China, and Iran. And let me tell you, Pakistan, I'll put it this way. You know, in Indian history, we read about subsidiary alliance, the British yeah. and the princes. Sorry, Pakistan, you know, will go where China asks it to go. Of course. So, if you look at the map, and China is getting very active in Afghanistan, yeah. unless we, oh, we won't talk to the terrorists. Listen, you have to talk to those who are in power. They opened their uh, embassy, I believe. In yes, yes. No, in fact, there is a lot of lot happening. They are uh, uh, mining for lithium and all that. You know what I mean? Uh, whereas we took the line, no, we won't talk to terrorists and this and that. Actually, what we should have done is that we should have told, because, you know, the Taliban government, listen, there is Indira Gandhi hospital there. We are prepared to activate it, but one condition. Our doctors will come, but nurses and all that, you should arrange locals. And we are making it very clear, Afghan women, they will be free to come and go. No question of, you know, uh, burqa or anything like that. No. They are working for us in our hospital. They should be like anyone else. Well, if you don't want it, say it. But I mean, so diplomacy should be imaginative. You know, we don't seem to be doing that. So I'll be back to Israel and Hamas. Like, uh, how do you conclude this? Like, what's the ending? What's the end you want as a diplomat? No, ending, we, there will be a ceasefire. Netanyahu will be compelled to, you know. See, if he enters Gaza, well, he can. If, as I said, there will be a quagmire. And then Hezbollah will get active. And then, if Israel is in danger with an American task force in the eastern Mediterranean, Biden will be put in a dilemma. Because if uh, American boots are there, well, Biden doesn't want body bags. Right. Certainly when he wants to get re-elected. Of course. In, and it has enough cost him enough um, harm in Afghanistan when he... Ah, he his withdrawal was, uh, what shall I say, most uh, incompetent. Not really thought out. Impulsive. You know, these are all matters of diplomacy where what is required is calm thinking, a lot of uh, debate within. A discourse. You know what I mean. Uh, interactive debate and then a decision, pros and cons, instead of impulsive, oh, we are going to withdraw by such and such a date. I think we have covered all the points and we'll be looking forward like what happens in 
the rest is in israel and just hope for the best for the people of palestine and israel always a pleasure to be with lok neeti and uh, through you let me say hello to all the listeners yeah thanks so much sir. and thank you so much for coming join the podcast Thank <laughs> you.